we have Frank in Hong Kong. How are you, Frank? Thanks for waiting. Welcome to the show with Mandisa and Matt. Hi, Frank. Hi, Matt and Mandisa. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thanks. Good. Hi. Um, so I come from. So actually, my name is not like Frank, but I, I think that it was changed just because I requested it because I, I come from a pretty like conservative Muslim sure. family from Egypt. I'll call you whatever you want. I'll use whatever pronouns you want. I'll use whatever name you want. It's not like we asked you for yeah, your birth Frank certificate. Is yeah, so Frank is fine. No, no, I mean, Frank is completely fine. Um, sure. So, like, my, my dad is basically, like, a local imam in the local mosque. And, you know, my mom gives lectures, Islamic lectures every week to the women in my area. So, like, I'm from a pretty conservative family, I would say. And, like, over the last year, I've kind of been, like, hooked on your videos and, uh, you know, I went from absolutely like despising Matt for making me doubt my faith to like being a huge fan. And like, as of around like a year ago, I kind of became an ex Muslim. Oh, uh, congratulations. Congrats. My, awesome. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, my question is mainly about like dealing with my family, I would say. Um, I I'm very lucky where I'm kind of like financially stable and work in like a different country from Egypt, which has like secular laws. And so I'm not really worried about my safety in that sense. But like around six months ago, I made the like unfortunate mistake of telling my parents that I became like ex-Muslim and like our relationship has been terrible ever since oh, like, yeah. my sister mm. who, who actually like lives with them and tells me like they're always you know crying all day all night they wake up at 2 a.m and you know pray to allah to like make me go to the right path and you know they're just purely convinced i'll be tortured in hell forever mm -hmm. if i die like this and uh, it's just kind of like breaking my heart um and like to think that they're going through this and so I've kind of like over the last few months, I've been essentially thinking to like lie to them and just tell them, you know, uh, I've repented, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Muslim again and just basically keep my ideas to myself. Um, but I'm wondering like w what you guys think about it. Do you think it's kind of cowardly to lie about your faith when your life, when your life is not really on the line, as is the case, like with other ex-Muslims? So this is kind of tricky because as a community building organization that encourages open identification whenever possible, um, you know, I, but we also respect people who are still in a closet or um, for people to do this at their own pace because we can't force people to say that they're atheist or, you know, or ex-Muslim or questioning um, simply because that's what we do. Um, however, there does come a point in time where we encourage people to, um, you know, to, to just really do what's best for them. You know, it's I understand that your parents are very upset right now. But unfortunately, we live in a society where we still feel like we absolutely have to adhere to what our parents want. And I say this being a parent, <laughs> you know, I say this as someone who wants the best for my children, but at the same time, my identity is not wrapped uh, solely into them, which means that they have the right to be autonomous. They have the right to make certain decisions, especially once they become adults especially when it comes to their perspective and definitely if they aren't hurting anyone. And unfortunately, coming from religious households, you are still beholden to, um, you know, to, to adhering to what maybe the parents in the community want you to do. And the question becomes, how can, how long would you as the individual be willing to do that at the cost of right. your liberation? So that is mm -hmm. ultimately a question for you. Um, I think you can always tell your parents that, you know, you love them no matter what. This doesn't change how you feel about them, you know, unless there are other issues at, at play, which people often don't, you know, discuss. But um, when it comes to how they feel about your journey, um, you can understand that 
they're upset. But ultimately, it really is about uh, your liberation, your comfort, and where you are as a person. And I personally would not recommend anyone um, give that up for the sake of someone else's comfort or the sake of someone else's, um, you know, uh, insecurities. Right. And that's not to say that that's what your parents are feeling, but that that is what that is what tends to happen. And so, being that you are in a pretty safe space, it is uh, right now. This is pretty emotional. Um, and it may be for a while. You may need to prepare yourself that you, you prepare yourself that this may be an issue with your parents for for a good while. And hopefully you have more of a support system in either other relatives or in other groups or in other organizations where you can find like minded people, because there are other organizations. For example, there's ex-Muslims of North America. You have other groups that support ex-Muslims. And so this would be a very, very good opportunity for you if you haven't already to seek out those support systems so that they you might be able to get some advice specifically related to leaving Islam. Yeah, I, I would just add, first of all, I don't think it's cowardly. I think what you're, right. the reason you, that you've given for what you're thinking about doing uh, is compassionate. You you see that you're doing that who you are is upsetting your parents. So you're willing to pretend to say to save their uh, emotional feelings and stuff. That's not cowardly. That's compassionate. However, uh, it's something that I personally couldn't do. At the end of the day, what Mandisa and I think about it, uh, it shouldn't be relevant. It should be about you and what you're comfortable with. And I know you're calling in to kind of get our opinion on it. Uh, I'm always going to recommend that yeah. whenever possible, people should be themselves mm -hmm. because if people, if, if you are pretending to be something you're not in order to allow people to continue loving you and treating you a certain way, they don't love you. They're not treating you a certain way. They are treating a straw man, a fictional version of you that way. And if you're comfortable, if you're fine doing that for the, the rest of their life, um, then that's on you. I, it's just something that I can't do. Right, right. Absolutely. And and like I said before, the you, you have to decide for yourself if that's what you're going to be comfortable with. And if you're not, then we absolutely recommend that you don't. Yeah. And you can still be compassionate and understanding of your parents without having to uh, bend over backwards, you know, to cater to that. And by the way, I mean, generally speaking, it's it's parents um, who should be doing everything in their power to protect their children um, and not. I mean, and not that children shouldn't try to protect their parents as well, but I mean, do you think your parents would pretend to stop being Muslims in order to save your feelings and you from being hurt? Because that points out the inequity in this relationship. Right. I, I know in my case, uh, I'm, I'm, my parents are not going to change their mind um, or minds and maybe, or maybe mine, maybe singular was better, but that's, that's hitting a little close to home, but it's, uh, there's no way they would pretend to be an atheist so as not to offend me. And I would rather, I, I appreciate the fact that while my parent, while, while the relationship with my parents has difficulties related to the fact that I'm an atheist, I will always be happy that they know who I am, who I actually am. And that, you know, it, to the extent that this causes problems for them, it's not me causing them problems. It's their religious views that are causing the problems. Right. And that also uh, yeah, goes yeah, to awesome. the parent. Right. That also goes to the parents being able to separate your perspective from you. And if they right. think that you have changed as a person, you know, now that you and, and, and it's, it's totally possible that you have. Usually when people leave religion, they let go of a lot of dogmatic and problematic views. So if that has changed you right, for the yeah. better, then great. Hopefully your parents can see that. If not, then I would just say prepare for a, a tough road, but ultimately one where, again, um, you are feeling, you are at your best. Yeah. And, and remember, I mean, you know, while I appreciate you asking, I mean, yeah. I don't know your family and I'm not a Muslim or an ex-Muslim. And I know plenty of ex-Muslims have worked with many and had conversations. Um, it, it sounds like you're not at fear of, you know, 
harm or reprisal, which is the not the case for, for some of my ex-Muslim friends. Um, so you're going to end up knowing best for your situation. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you're reaching out, but I'm, I'm going to bet, I'm willing to bet that you've already made up your mind and you were either wanting to make sure, hey, did I overlook something, which is a great reason to reach out to other people um, or, you know, yeah. kind of a an affirmation. And, and if so, I'm going to say, yes, live your damn life. In, Absolutely. In yep. Yeah, honestly, I've, I've actually like, bit, like I've been leaning against that um, mainly because when I when I did try to like in the beginning to kind of lie, it was really hurtful and like I I just I was just kind of feeling enraged and I couldn't really keep it up. Um, you know, what happens if you can't keep the lie up? What happens if you can't keep the lie yeah. up and a year from now they find out that you've been faking it this whole time or you break down and tell them or they they hear this call and recognize your voice or somebody else does and sends it to them. Uh, lying, I, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm, I won't say that there's no time to lie. I think there absolutely is a time to lie, but it's, it's like a last resort and needs like really strong reasons before I could justify it. Right. Right. But let us know how it's going, Frank. Touch back in. You can also uh, reach out on the Discord and the Facebook pages as well. Um, and yeah. by the way, don't forget that there's always Recovering from Religion and ex-Muslims of North America and worldwide uh, that have plenty of people that you can uh, reach out to and and uh, find people who've been through the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the, for the talk. Thanks, Frank. You're Appreciate welcome. It.